This is the installation course for the Panasonic 26,000 through 42,000 single zone models in either cooling only or heat pump. The wall mounted models in the 30,000 and 36,000 cooling only and heat pump models will not apply to the material referenced in this presentation. This presentation will not cover product overview or application. Before unboxing the equipment, make sure that it is a match set and it is what you need for your specific application. For instance, make sure the system is a heat pump if you need heat. Both the heat pump and cooling only systems are rated down to 0 degrees Fahrenheit in cooling or heating right out of the box. All Panasonic systems use DC inverter driven compressors. An inverter system is a system made up of a DC variable speed compressor, DC variable speed condenser fan motor with a DC variable speed indoor blower motor. This along with multiple thermistors, an electronic expansion valve, and intelligent circuitry enable the Panasonic mini splits to be able to provide excellent comfort and energy efficiency. The compressor capacities will vary from approximately 20% to slightly over 100% of the system's overall rated capacity. All of this means you get the capacity you need, not more or less. Also, did you know that Panasonic is the number one compressor manufacturer in the world, and as of 2014, Panasonic was recently named the number one selling mini split manufacturer in Japan for eight consecutive years. All Panasonic systems utilize R410A refrigerant and require a few specialized tools. A flaring tool for R410A systems will make a flare with a slightly wider shoulder to help seal better. A flaring tool with an eccentric lobe and a clutch will also help to make a quality leak-free flare. The use of a torque wrench will ensure the connections are not over or under tightened. Too loose will cause leaks and too tight will cause copper or brass connections to split which will also cause leaks. All Panasonic units have a 5 16 inch service gauge port connection. So a set of R410A gauges and hoses with 5 16 connections are needed. Or a quarter inch male to 5 16 inch female adapter could also be used. If brazing is needed, then purging with nitrogen is required to prevent oxidation from building up inside the copper and contaminating the system. Nitrogen is also needed for leak checking the system once all connections are completed. Humidity in the air contains moisture, so a vacuum pump is needed to remove this moisture and other contaminants within the refrigerant tubing. To allow this moisture to boil, a vacuum of 500 microns must be attained. The micron level can only be read with an accurate electronic micron gauge. The right tools, attention to detail, and even customer education on things like operation of the remote controller will all lead to a quality job. A quality installation means minimal callbacks and a happy customer who will tell their friends and family, which hopefully leads to more business. At the end of this course, this is a list of items that should be checked before leaving and includes things such as power, piping, wiring, drain lines, and how to verify system performance. All Panasonic cooling only and heat pump products have 516 service port connections. Your R410A service gauges require 516 host connections, or you can use a readily available adapter like the Ritchie or JB models shown in this slide. Shown here is a basic system layout for a wall mounted single zone mini split system. Two separately insulated refrigerant lines connect the indoor unit to the outdoor unit. Each indoor unit has a condensate drain and a PVC adapter which is included that will allow this drain to connect to a standard 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. Do not form any condensate traps within the drain piping as they are not necessary. Most units come with a standard wired remote controller 
but a wireless remote controller is also available to control the system. Don't forget items like a condenser pad, drain line, and line set covers. When installing the indoor unit, there are several clearances which have to be maintained. These clearances are not only for proper performance of the system, but also for future servicing of the equipment. These clearances will vary depending on the type of indoor unit being installed. These clearances are shown as the minimum distances required and can also be referenced in the installation manual. Improperly installed equipment will result in unnecessary callbacks and poor system performance. When installing the outdoor unit, there are several clearances which have to be maintained. These clearances are not only for proper performance of the system, but also for future servicing of the equipment. These clearances will vary depending on the type of outdoor unit being installed. These clearances are shown as the minimum distances required and can also be referenced in the installation manual. These clearances will also vary depending on the obstructions around the outdoor unit, such as walls, fences, or landscaping. Some systems may require the use of an auxiliary condensate pump based on the installation. This slide shows how this auxiliary condensate pump would wire into the Panasonic systems for the models referenced in this slide. Make sure the condensate pump specified will accommodate any vertical lift requirements and total length of drain piping installed for the installation. An undersized pump will overheat and cause poor system performance. In some instances, a wind baffle is needed and one is available from Panasonic or it can also be field supplied. Controlling wind through the coil and heating or low ambient cooling is very important in installations. If multiple outdoor units are installed, the wind baffle could also be used to divert discharge air upward and keep it from blowing into another outdoor unit's intake. The Panasonic version is a three-piece plexiglass design that can easily be cut to width if needed. The part number is WIND-B1. Facing the intake side of the unit towards a wall or other obstacle will also help control blowing wind and reduce snow from collecting on the coil. In snowy regions, heat pump outdoor units should be elevated to keep snow from blocking airflow and to allow for proper drainage during defrost. In some cases, heat tape or a pan heater may need to be installed in the bottom of the unit to keep defrost water from refreezing and to allow drainage from the unit. A drain connection can also be attached to the bottom of the unit but it is possible that the drain itself could freeze and clog if heat tape is not used. The refrigerant tubing size is the same for all six outdoor units offered, which is 3 8 for the narrow pipe and 5 8 for the wide pipe. Do not deviate from the specified tubing diameter shown. Panasonic cannot guarantee the system performance or warranty any system installed with the incorrect piping diameters other than what has been specified by the factory. Never install dryers, vibration isolators, sight glasses, shutoff valves, or oil traps into the line set. If there is a service issue and the system needs to be cleaned, dryers can be temporarily used and this will be discussed further in the service class. Once your piping is completed, the system can be evacuated and leak checked. Pressurize the line set and indoor unit to 400 PSIG of dry nitrogen and check the flare connections for bubbles by applying a soapy or leak detection solution. Ideally, we would like to have the system hold this pressure for 24 hours, but this is not usually practical. 30 minutes to an hour should be a minimum before evacuating the system. Next, release the nitrogen pressure and connect your vacuum pump and micron gauge. Pull the system down to 500 microns. If 500 microns cannot be obtained, there is either a leak or contamination in the lines. If no leaks are found, you can usually pressurize with nitrogen and vacuum several times to clean it out. 
When 500 microns is reached, close off your gauges and turn the pump off. The system should be held in this vacuum for a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour. Continue with the rest of the installation while waiting on the vacuum and pressure test. Before making flares, always remember to slide the nut onto the pipe first. It's very aggravating to make a nice flare and realize you forgot the nut. Make nice straight cuts and deburr the inside and outside of the tubing. If you are not using the Panasonic supplied flare nuts, make sure the ones you are using are of the heavy duty type for R410A refrigerants. Forged flare nuts are stronger than cast ones and less prone to cracking. Don't forget that both lines will sweat and need to be insulated separately. Companies like CPS make flaring tools, torque wrenches, gauges, and even complete toolkits specifically designed around R410A products. Once the flaring of the copper is completed, it is recommended to add a small amount of refrigerant oil to the cup of the flare and the threads of the female end to ensure a good seal. The flare nut should then be torqued to the specified torque rating depending on the diameter of the flare nut as shown in the chart referenced on this slide. This will make sure the flare is not damaged due to over tightening of the flare nut. Sealing compounds are not required for a properly made flare. With this being said, the Panasonic Tech Support Department has not received any negative customer feedback on products such as Nylog, which can be purchased through your local HVAC supplier. These systems can be powered as either a single source or dual source circuit. The breaker sizes shown for the different outdoor models are sized to handle both the indoor and outdoor units amperage when installed as a single source power supply. When powering as a dual source, the indoor unit would utilize a 208-230 volt 15 amp breaker. The indoor and outdoor units both operate off of a 208 or 230 volt single phase power supply. In this diagram, the indoor and outdoor units are shown with a single power supply for both the indoor and the outdoor unit. These systems also require an 18-2 stranded shielded wire ran from the outdoor unit back to the indoor unit. This wire is terminated on terminals U1 and U2 of both the indoor and outdoor units wiring terminal strip. The voltage being produced through this 18-2 shielded wire is a pulsating DC signal and should not be ran in the same conduit as the high voltage wiring. Also, the shield from this low voltage wire should be grounded on one end, typically done at the outdoor unit. In this diagram, the indoor and outdoor units are shown with a separate power supply to the indoor unit and a separate power supply to the outdoor unit. As shown in this slide, Panasonic has several different wired or wireless remote controller options available for these systems. The installation of the wired remote controller will require an 18-2 stranded shielded wire to be ran from the remote controller location to the indoor unit's electrical control compartment. Inside the indoor unit's electrical control compartment, there will be a black and white wire which is terminated by a blue plug. These two wires will have the label attached which will read remote control wiring. In the event the label is not present, these wires can also be identified by tracing them back from the RC connector on the indoor unit's main control board as shown in this slide. Once located, cut off the end of the blue plug to separate the two wires. This black and white wire is then joined together with the two wires coming from the wired remote controller. The remote controller is powered from the indoor unit's main control board with 12 to 15 volts DC. When utilizing the wired remote controller on the PK models only, the position of the number three dip switch will have to be changed on the main indoor board from the factory off position to the on position. If this change is not completed, the system will operate for a short period of time and then fault out on an error code. Models affected are the 26 PEK 1U6 and the 26 PSK 1U6. 
In the event the wireless remote controller becomes lost or damaged, the system can still be operated through a switch or keypad either on the indoor unit or wall depending on mounting location of the receiver. On the wall mounted indoor unit, this switch is located behind the hinge grill which allows access to the air filters. On the ceiling models, it will either be located by the electrical compartment or on the wall depending on what type of receiver assembly is being utilized. When placed in operation without the remote, if a heat pump system is utilized, it will default to the auto changeover mode with a default set point of 74 degrees Fahrenheit. On a cooling only model, the system will default to the cooling only mode with a default set point of 74 degrees Fahrenheit. The indoor fan is set to the auto mode on either system. Once the system identifies with the replacement remote controller, it will then start to follow the remote controller commands once again. When utilizing the wireless remote controller, there are up to six different remote frequencies which can be set on each remote controller. This may become necessary on installations where each system must operate independently and are within close proximity to one another. There are also dip switches at the bottom of the remote controller which determine the type of indoor and outdoor unit being utilized. These dip switches should be set in accordance with the type of units installed as referenced in the above slide. These systems must complete an auto addressing procedure once the system is powered on for the first time. This procedure ensures that the indoor and outdoor unit are a match set and can communicate back and forth through the 18-2 stranded shielded wire. Until this procedure is completed, the indoor outdoor unit will not operate. When an auto addressing failure occurs, an error code will be shown on either the indoor unit's wired remote controller, indoor unit's receiver lamp assembly, and or the outdoor unit's main circuit board displayed by LEDs 1 and 2. Once this failure has occurred, proceed to the outdoor unit and power off the main disconnect switch. On systems with dual point wiring, make sure the indoor unit stays powered on. Wait until all the lights on the outdoor board go completely off, then power the disconnect back on and locate the black button labeled as A.ADD on the main control board. Press in this button and hold it in for 7 to 8 seconds, then release. This will initiate the auto addressing process manually. Once the indoor and outdoor unit are addressed, LEDs 1 and 2 on the main outdoor board will go completely out. This procedure can take several minutes to complete. Once the installation is completed, follow the final steps listed above in this final commissioning checklist. This concludes the installation presentation and thank you for your attendance. Please visit our Panasonic website for any additional information on our heating and air conditioning product offerings and other great products.